In this video we're going to talk about biotechnology. More specifically we're going to look at the use of microorganisms in this video um, and then in the next video we're probably going to go on to industrial enzymes then I'd say we've covered the topic pretty well. So first things first what you've got is we've got biotechnology this is basically technology based on biology it's in the name and this usually involves the exploitation of living organisms uh, for the benefit of things like food science, industry and things like that. So there are four areas we look at, the first being healthcare. So obviously drugs like penicillin, drugs like this come from microorganisms. The next being agriculture, we can genetically modify crops using biotechnology to produce better flavours, greater yields, uh, modify them so they don't uh, come under uh, problems of disease and things like that. Then we have uh, enzymes in the use of industry. For example, they are biological catalysts, they're natural catalysts, they speed up reactions. Um, we even use enzymes themselves in our washing powders at home. And then food. So we have improved nutrition, improved texture, flavour and things like that. So what foods can we produce uh, with biotechnology? So the first one we're going to talk about, mycoprotein. This is grown by the fungus Fusarium. Next, we've got medicinal drugs such as penicillin. This comes from another fungus, uh, this time called penicillium. Uh, this is grown in culture and penicillin is basically uh, an antibiotic product that is produced by this fungus. Microorganisms can use... Uh, Microorganisms can also be used for wastewater treatment. So you've got a variety of different bacteria, fungi and bits going on. But this essentially makes the wastewater uh, less harmful and they can even produce byproducts that are actually useful for us. So basically you're turning a load of nonsense, garbage, harmful shit into goodness. So why are microorganisms so good and so useful? There's several factors here which I'm going to write down. The first being they grow rapidly. If you can give them their favourable conditions such as the best temperature, um, the best type of moisture, things like that, they can grow rapidly and reproduce. They can also be genetically engineered to produce byproducts like we've already established. Uh, they can be grown anywhere in the world. It doesn't matter on climate, where you're from, things like this. If you can get them in a lab, which you can have the same lab conditions at, you can grow them. And obviously this final one sort of links in with the genetic engineer bun, but genetically engineered or not, microorganisms can produce byproducts that can be harvested by us humans that are most likely useful to us. That's why we harvest them. So now we're going to talk about the growth curve. So as you can see here we've got the curve. The population as time progresses initially remains stable, then increases, then goes stable and then decreases. This is shown in steps 1, 2, 3 and 4. Obviously 4 is the decrease, 2 is the increase. So these steps and stages have names. The first being lag. So where it remains stable is the lag phase. The population growth is the log phase. The next stable phase is the stationary phase and number 4 is the decline. The population decreases. So let's talk business. What happens? Number one, this is our lag phase, obviously. The organisms that we're growing are adjusting to their surrounding conditions. This may mean things like taking in water, uh, expanding the cells, or even producing inducible enzymes. Remember, I've done a video on that on the lac or peron. So obviously the population growth is not very large here. In fact, it doesn't really happen at all, as they're not repopulating yet, they're just adjusting. So, here we have it. They've adjusted... To, uh, to this new surroundings they've got, be it probably most likely the petri dish or the fermenter, wherever you've got them. They've adjusted to their surroundings. They found there is a hell load of nutrients. Um, so because of this, the population doubles for every single uh, reproduction. So every organism then becomes two, which then becomes four, which then becomes eight. So the population exponentially, rapidly increases. Number three is going to be called the stationary phase. This is where the nutrients are running slightly low. The waste products are beginning to build up and the death rate is the exact same as the rate of reproduction. So uh, the population doesn't grow nor does it decline. The final one, number four, is the decline phase. Most of the nutrients have basically been exhausted. There's no food to survive on. The waste products and the secondary metabolites are building up greatly. So this means the death rate actually exceeds the new reproduction rate, leading to an overall population decline. So now I'm going to quickly talk about metabolites. So primary metabolites are the products of normal growth. So as the population expands, so does the number of metabolites. As you can see, I'm drawing this with an orange pen. So these primary metabolites include things like 
proteins that are just used during the normal growth and reproduction of this microorganism. So, during the log phase here, this is where the highest rate of primary metabolite production is. Now, secondary metabolites are essentially products and substances that are produced by the organism, obviously. They're not part of the normal growth of the organism. So as you can see here, I've drawn the secondary metabolite curve. It kind of goes straight through the middle. It doesn't actually match the growth curve. And this is because normally they actually produce uh, like harmful, toxic, antibiotic chemicals that kind of put off other bacteria. For example, as you can see, this goes through uh, the stationary phase right there when the nutrients are all of a sudden kind of in decline. The bacteria realise that. So they're producing these secondary metabolites to kind of like fend off and protect their nutrient supply from other bacteria. So this point here, the highest amount of secondary metabolites is produced during the stationary phase. So after this, basically it means the concentration of secondary metabolites reaches a maximum and that leads to a decline in population of the microorganism. So a question here suggests why secondary metabolites are produced after the main growth phase. And obviously this is like I've just said. For example, uh, the penicillium uh, fungi, obviously it wants to grow and survive. So once its population grows hella loads, then it starts producing these antibiotic penicillin chemicals that protect its nutrient supply so it can keep on growing. 